Hello and welcome to another Optimal Game State video. This week we're going to be doing something a little different. In the most recent White Dwarf we got lots of card handouts and one of them was the Warcry dashboard. The idea here is to have a little place to store all your ability dice while you play the game. The project involves uh, cutting out some foam board, giving it some depth so the dice can be nice and secure. I was surprised to find out that there were actually enough to make two boards, which was pretty awesome. Uh, there's the back and the front, so the back has a bit of uh, art on it, and then the front has kind of two different styles you can go with. And then at the bottom, we have a little track where you can uh, keep track of the number of victory points you have. There is this piece, a uh, template of what you'll be cutting out for the foam board itself. It is double sided, which I'm not sure if the intention here was to make sure you weren't ruining anything on the other side, or if maybe there was a uh, you know, a change in the number of pages in this particular white dwarf because it would have been super handy to have two of these because we've got enough cards to actually make two, but we're gonna be, we're gonna have to try use reuse this template to actually be able to get the, the two foam boards. Foam board itself is you know easy enough to pick up in a art supply store. Uh, the one I have here is white. I have this around the house already because they're actually really handy for making inserts for board games. It is possible to get black ones, and in this particular case I think it would be a lot better. As you can see here, I'm using a steel ruler to help with the guide, and we're using a brand new blade on this particular scalpel to make it nice and clean. You can see here when I went through the cut, uh, it went you know, so far deep, and then on the other side it didn't go all the way through. So that's something to kind of be aware of when you're doing this, you need to do it nice and uh, uh, firm to get it all the way through. Obviously keep to the normal safety rules uh, that you expect. These are blades, you can lose fingers and don't want to do that. This is uh, some adhesive spray. This is recommended in the article. I didn't actually have any at home. I had to go out and pick up some. The hope here is that it'll give a nice even coverage over it, which it does. And uh, from reading the, the particular guide, hopefully we will be able to remove it afterwards and uh, put it down again later. Okay, so we're just trimming the sides. Nice, firm, clean cuts. And uh, another one of the suggestions that we have in here is to use an emery board. So it's a, a nail file to actually tidy up the edges. So every so often you'll kind of if the, the cut isn't 100% clean, um, it can be handy to go in with the emery board and just tidy it up. Okay, the next part here is actually going in and um, putting pins into the corners. Again, this is a recommendation of the, the, the White Dwarf. From doing this, I did find it really handy because it gets you a nice clean corner and it gets you a point to work from, which is handy. But um, it does take a little bit of time just going in, pin, 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 pin. When I started doing this, I did use the ruler to uh, you know, make those cuts. When you're making the cuts, you want to make them from the corner out, if that makes sense. So that'll mean your initial blade cut will start with a very clean corner. Flip it over and then do it same from the other side, meeting in the middle, and then you should get a, a nice line. In the end, I actually didn't use the ruler when I was making these cuts. I found it a lot easier just to kind of slowly work my way along. Now. The finished product is in places a little ragged because of the way I went. It's possible that it would have been a little bit cleaner if I stuck to the ruler, but I was worried that I'd be a little bit off and it would make a bit of a mess. Okay, we now have two. Um, so there are a couple of, there's a lot of rough edges. Uh, I've been using the emery board to try clean things up a bit. I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, so you can see there's like little stray bits where the, the paper, cause it's, yeah, it's like foam and then uh, a paper or a light card uh, on either side. So what often happens is the, the paper on one side or the other will uh, end up a bit strange and kind of needs a bit of tidy up. Um, I'm not too concerned by it because we are going to be cutting up the covers. Where have I got them? Oh, here we are. So we're safe. So we are going to be cutting these up later. Um, as long as we make sure we've got a clean line on this, it'll make the underneath look better. Um, what I am going to do though is I've got a Sharpie. Is this a Sharpie? 
Oh, it is Sharpie. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edge, or more importantly, in the middle. Uh, the middle, the edge, we can tackle later if we have to. Um, but the middle, we're not really going to be able to easily uh, black um, because we'll have the, the backboard already in there. Um, so I'm going to get working on that. So a little bit more tidying up. And um, then I'm going to do all the middle bit black. All right. So we've spent the time going around the marker. The White Dwarf article does actually mention that you might want to use paint to get into corners. And I kind of see why now. Uh, because of the way the foam works, in the corners, the it can sometimes kind of recess. And then it'll, it's kind of hard for the marker to, to get in. So sometimes you might want to drop some paint into it, like a paintbrush will just be able to reach in a little bit further. The next step we're going to be doing is we're going to be mounting it onto the bottom. So, like that. so like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the bottom part first uh, at the and a half, and then I'm going to glue it down, and then I'm going to cut around the cardboard. That way, I'll get a nice um, clean cut for it. We might need to cut again to trim around to make sure we get a kind of nice finish. But yeah, that will be for later. Okay, so. Okay, so here we have this one, and look, it doesn't match. So the bottom and the back do match, that is actually fine. Um, it's just the middle bits off. Now, I don't know if I screwed up, or if the design is a little off. That's actually, I, I've already bent the thing, so unfortunately there's no way for me to check. It's not a big deal though. What I'm going to do is I'm going to match this with the um, with the gap, with the hole, and then I'm just going to trim off. So the back will lose a little bit of trim, and then there's a, a little bit we lose here. So luckily there's enough space at the bottom, and then that'll, that'll uh, square it off. So uh, the next step they do say is to use the spray adhesive. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to finish off this first one first and then go back. Now, I do note that, interestingly enough, if you wanted, like, they could have done a normal back and uh, you could have just slipped in the ones that you cut out, but I guess you have to be a little bit neat for that. Anyway. Okay, and here we have the finished product. So you can see it's got a little bit of depth. And when I take some dice, I can uh, pop them in. 
So, they will put in nicely. There another one. So they're nice and secure. If they get knocked, they're not going to go anywhere. I have to admit, I really like the, the round tracker. So that's a nice, nice little, little feature up there. Um, putting it together was tricky enough. Um, a lot of the cutting, I actually didn't use the, the, the ruler with. I just found it easier to slowly work through it. As I might have shown you, um, the inner sides didn't match with the back now. I don't know if that's something I messed up or if there is a slice issue with the, the, the actual template. Either way, to fix that, I would suggest when you are doing the inner template, give yourself a little bit of leeway on the top and the bottom. Then when you cut this out uh, and you're putting it down onto it, align the, the name, so where it says triple, double, so on, with the center of it. And then when you come back and well, actually, again, it might be worth leaving a little bit of a, a, a top and a bottom with this if you can. And then, maybe we kind of need to get it matched. So maybe cut it all out first and then put it down. So the suggestion says to put the back on first and then put the front on. But maybe what you should be doing is you should be putting the front on first because the front does need to match here and then cut down the the foam board to match and then put the back on at that stage. Yeah, that would probably work a bit better. Um, anyway, um, oh, and the black around the sides, I've uh, finished that off. The black on the inside is a bit interesting. I'm, I've still got the white, there, I still got the white from the, the cardboard that I've put in on this. Um, and I'm not really willing to go in and do the marker on it because the few times I've tried, I think, can you see this one here? So I've tried doing a little bit here, but I, I just ended up smudging it on the side. And I don't want to, to do that because when I was actually putting on the inner thing, it got quite messy. But that's it. That's the two boards done. Um, the marker will probably leave a little bit to dry before um, I should be putting this near anything. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little little feature, a little little extra bit of pizzazz, uh, so it'll make make the experience just that little bit better. Thanks for making it all the way to the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Each week I put up a new video talking about one of Games Workshop's specialist games. The goal is always to try and make the best possible two-player experience. If this is something you'd find interesting, please subscribe to the channel and comment to let me know what you'd like to see in future.